What we're looking at here for Sound Design 8.3 is an instrument called Sculpture, which is from Logic Pro. This is a really great instrument, one of my favorites, that takes advantage of physical modeling, in this case, the modeling of a string. So one of the main limitations of sampling, even though it was a really nice way of taking a recorded sound and reproducing it and giving uh, synthesis a realism that was just not possible under subtractive synthesis and FM and other types that came before it. But, so, but sampling was limited in that you were only had so much that you could do to manipulate the sound. When we're working in a physical modeling instrument, we start with possibly a sample, but the sample is reduced to the characteristics that make it up. For example, an analysis can be done with the software to see what the frequency spectrum contains and what happens over time with that frequency spectrum. Once we have that information as data, then we're able to manipulate the sound in ways that were really impossible to do with sampling alone. So let's take a closer look at some of the possibilities here in Sculpture. Let me hit a, a key so we can hear the basic string all by itself. Okay, it has kind of a uh, nylon-y quality to it. In fact, over here under Material, we have a XY graph that will allow us to change the internal damping and therefore uh, simulate different types of materials. So if we want a string that sounds like it's made from steel, we can choose that. We can choose nylon, wood, and believe it or not, glass. And then of course because we're just dealing with numbers here, we can create some variation of any of those. Now an interesting uh, additional animation piece to this software is if you right click or control click on the Mac over here under enable string animation, as you pluck the string you'll get a little animation of what's actually happening with it. Let's take a look over in this section because this is where we are disturbing the string in some way. We're we're engaging the string somehow. Right now we've got an impulse, so basically we're just hitting the string and object number one is right here. So if I hit the string over close to what might be the bridge on the guitar, we're getting mostly just uh, higher overtones. And if I go right to the middle, we're getting a deeper fundamental. And by exciting it in different locations, we get the same type of behavior we would expect if we were using a real string. So let's go up here and change what we're uh, activating the string with. Let's go to a pick, like a guitar pick. Now let's try some bowing. So there's a variety of different uh, impulses that you can use to start the sound going. And then there's a couple of sliders here that actually represent the uh, guitar pickups, if you will. So if the guitar pickups under a string, um, then these two sliders will allow you to manipulate the positions. Okay, and then in addition to that, you might want to do something like uh, like damping. So we could disturb the string, say, with bouncing, and this is in position two. get the idea what's going on there. It's pretty cool. And then uh, number three, maybe we want to damp the string. Alright, 
just because the bouncing is is uh, kind of getting in the way. I'm going to pull that off. And for now, let's get rid of the damping. And bring this back to a pick. There we go. That's a little better. The other part of this is we can choose from a variety of different formants. So these are the frequency response characteristics of the resonant body uh, beyond just the characteristics of the string itself. So we can go under and pick from all of these preset examples. So uh, let's say we want to put this string that we're currently working with onto a cello. So what's represented here is the uh, the resonant characteristics or the formant of the cello's body. By contrast, let's put on something small like a mandolin or an acoustic guitar or a dobro guitar. You get the idea. Then in addition to that, there's an interesting array of modifiers, some familiar like LFOs, some a little bit different in here. Um, and then the, the more feature which allows you to manipulate over time some of these positions and settings uh, so that you get uh, kind of what we might call a vector synthesis where we get this this uh, dramatic dynamic change over time in the sound. So a lot of cool features embedded in this, but at the core of it is the idea of a vibrating string with a bunch of variables for how you can control that, and then a resonant body that can be changed as well.